Good morning. Software as a revenue driver, how to build our new automotive ecosystem. My name is Knut Kröscher, I'm head of digital business and mobility service. I want to tell a little bit about the ecosystem that we want to create at Carriot. So what is the, um, the Carriot about? Carriot is about platform business. That's about scalability, reusability. And you know about the car platforms that we have. The one is the volume platform, the ID family. The other one is the um, premium platform, Audi and Porsche. And then we have the third one, the unified platform, autonomous driving that coming in the future. And all the things you need across those platforms, that means it doesn't matter if you want to sell a five-year-old combustion engine or an electric vehicle, you need an e-commerce platform, for example. So the last lane, the digital business, actually has to be across those car platforms. So what else do we do? It's about e-commerce. It's about mobility services, charging, fueling, parking, those things. You need that cross-platform. When it comes to CRM, is it the case? Is it lead? Uh, you need this also cross car platform. And when it comes to the ID, the, the brand ID, well, we actually want to go into a direction of a group use ID. Um, you need that to log into our ecosystem, to connect the car, to enroll the car. And um, of course, you need to know what services is booked by the customer, uh, on what car is he and what service platform is that car in order to offer the best services. And why do we go in the direction of a group user ID? Because in the future, we will not have only car owner. Of course, we will have user. So we will have a driver, co-driver, and passengers in the back. They probably want to have a different entertainment than the guys as the co-driver, for example. And another important point is when it comes to dealerships. The dealerships look differently on a customer. There is a customer. Mr. Miller with his car, he has probably an, an Audi and a Volkswagen, and it's not the car where he is uh, acting on. Yeah? So that is the reason why we go into the direction of a group user ID. So holistic digital ecosystem, um, what does it mean? Of course, it starts with the car, with the hardware, with the things that works, with the charging, with the batteries. In between, we have the software to operate the car, to drive the car, but of course also to th get the things out of the car, on the mobile phone, with the customer, and back into the car. And of course, use the application. And of course, the most important thing is really collect the data. How is the customer driving? What services does he use to make really data-driven development? It's not that we want to act on beliefs. We want to act on, on facts and really see what is the services he wants. Why is he using his services, or why isn't he using a service? It's because it doesn't find it, it's because it's not worth. So that is what we're acting on. That is the basis to create an ecosystem customized for our customers and users. The car will be a social space, also a private space. What does it mean? We will have the touch points within the cars. That is the most important thing, probably the map. When it comes to map, it's about a point of interest. Ideally, you take the map in the future out of the car on the mobile back into the car. Then we have the voice assistance in order to really uh, do some tasks within the car. Then we will have the apps, the connections, take the services out of the car, preheating, preclimatization, so the connection really, even if you're out of the car, that you have the connection into the car. And there's a very important touch point also. Sometimes we forget about that. That's a physical touch point that's at the dealerships. It's still worth because when it comes to problem, the customer has to go to the dealership. So that is the reason why we need to connect that. In the future, what does it mean? If you think about services, if you think about work in the future, you will have an in-car office, do the video calls, drive to the next appointment of the customer, touch the screen, see what have we done at the last appointment, let it pre-read again that you're really prepared for the next appointment. You can have an X-ray photo on the screen, talk to your doctor, probably even more private than do it somewhere else. All these things will happen, and of course, entertainment. So this will happen within this space. And the car will be, when it comes from A to B, will be one part of the journey. So if we talk about intermodal mobility, it's important that you have the car within that chain. It's plane, train, the car, and the last mile. But you need an inner city and an intercity uh, mobility, and that is where the car will be still a very important part in that journey. And that's the reason why we said we need this app 
bringing the services out and into the car. I'll come to it later. So if we think that an um, approximate 90 minutes usage of the car on average basis, what can we do with that? That's a lot of time that you can use, that you can monetize, that you can use, as we said, in the future for work, for entertainment, for health. And we don't have to wait until we have autonomous driving car. We can start already with it now. And how will we do that in the future? We want to create services and we think of course, we can't do everything on ourselves. We want to do that with partner, with external companies, but there's still a lot of things that we think it should be done by us because whenever it comes to combination of a service and a car, that's where we're in the game. If you talk about charging, for example, you go and have uh, on many maps, charging apps, you have the charging station. But we know where the charging station really is. If you go for a supermarket, for example, you go to the address, but the charging station on the other side of the building. You have a 400 meters walk. We know really where the charging happens. So that is, we can do a better map or better service related to that. When it comes to communication of the car with the dealership, that's already live. We call it lead inbox. So we are able now these days, the car can tell us, well, there's something happened. There's a lamp not functioning anymore. The car connects the dealership. Prerequisite for that is, as I said, we have the consent of the customer, the customer's connected, the car's enrolled, and he put the preferred dealer in. Then the car will contact the dealer, the dealer can contact the customer, make an appointment, and bring him into the dealerships. These are services where we as an OEM write in. But when it comes to entertainment, music, that's of course something that we want to have as much as possible from external partners and, and colleagues who can really help to enrich and enlarge our ecosystem. But another uh, example is, if you have usually 30 minutes driving home in the evening, but we know your favorite series takes 45 minutes, we can slow down the car and help you to watch a series and bring it home in 45 minutes so you can watch the movie. Huh? These things are only in combination with services and the car, so that's the reason why we say it's not all external, it's a big portion where we're still in that boat. How does it work now? So, we said the carrier is the enabler of the brands. That means our digital experience platform, if you see from the right to the left, we have external and internal services and we have own services by brands. The brands decides what they choose for the customer. If it's premium-like, is it volume-like, what do they want to offer to the customer? And important is the brands have B2C and B2B customers. Yeah? We tend to forget the B2B customers, although we more than 60% sell into the B2B in the commercial area, but we all try to want to entertain the private customer. And especially for the B2B customers, it's of utmost interest that we take care that they have no breakdown with the car. So that is the prediction, predictive maintenance, what we're doing. That's important, and that's where we see there's a really a field and a right to win for us because we know the car, we know the customer, we can offer them and keep them within our ecosystem. And when I talk about ecosystem, as I said, it's including our dealers, the agents, bring them into the dealership, fix the car before something happens. And then we have business customers. We're also sharing data, anonymous data. In Germany, we have the Mobility Data Space, an initiative from the government. There's a similar project, it's called Catena X, on the European level, where we exchange data with German Telecom, with German Railway, to make a better life for our customers. On a on a, a voluntary basis, exchange data. We put, for example, roadside assistance, road signs into it, road conditions to really warn or pre-warn the customers. So that is something where we're also in. And then, of course, we have other OEMs that we in the future also want to serve. So if you put that together, based on the data that we get from the car, data-driven services, offering our brands, the brands are the ones acting in front of the customer, B2C, B2B, that is what we want to do, and that is within our ID. So we want to lock in the customer with our ID in order to keep them in the loop into, in our ecosystem. So that means we have to understand the needs of a customer, not what we think is good, so not really see the data. Another example is if the customer, we have also the geofencing uh, ideas, if the customer stands in front of a repair chain, he's probably two hours there. He's not eating a burger, he's probably getting a service from a free repair chain. 
So we know that, and as I said, if we have the concept, we can offer him personalized a voucher for next visit in our workshops. That is what we want to do together with our brands. That is, that is one of the examples. And of course, to serve our brands with user-centric design. We think in the future we will move into an agency system, so we want to sell directly to our customers. How can we do that? We have an example in UK. We had drivers, golf drivers. We knew they did not do them more than 100 miles a day. We knew they had charging stations on their way. So we offered them a concrete offer for an electric vehicle because they had, not more, they had the mileage, they had the charging stations. We had a lead quote about 40%. So 40% of the customers come into the dealership and ask for an offer. That's, that's outstanding. Before that, we couldn't match that. So that is about personalized campaign. And this is the reason why we say operating to external service partners, that's good, but always in combination, and we want to stay in the driver's seat. Yeah? So I said, it's about platform and scalability. Here's an example. We understand us as the ones who are really building the machine room. So we created a so-called backend for front-end. We call it CAT, CAT Area Toolkit. So we create services that the brands can just pick up if it's charging and fueling, do it in the look and feel of the brands, but we do the service once. We have the connection into the service backend of the car. They do it in look and feel. So that means we have one service. If it comes to the next service, it can be used by all the brands. They decide if it suits to their customers. And if we have bug fixing, it's done once. So we, we put the logic out of the apps, out of the cars, into the backends, have the connection in the cars, and have the connection to the app in order to be able to scale it you know, and do it once, save money. Because you know that the, the Volkswagen Group is very, very famous for the good cars. That is because we had the internal competition who is doing the best cars. But in the area of the digitization, it's about scaling and reusability, and that is what this is behind. So we take care of the engine room. So on that leads, uh, of course, to a so-called circle. Yeah? What does it mean? We start with the interest and the purchase or the awareness of our customers from the websites into our CRM loop. We offer them in concrete, demonstrate a car, whatever. When they purchase the car, we want to keep them in the loop in the ecosystem. Why is that possible? For example, today we know much better what is about the car. When the car comes back, we are able to offer a second and a third life cycle when it comes to leasing, for example. We do not only know how the car was serviced, we knew that also in the past, but today we know how the car was driven and what status do we have of the car. What is the battery status? What is the car itself? So we are able, even in the second and the third leasing cycle, we can offer we and tier packages because we can, we can handle the risk that keeps the customer in the loop, in our ecosystem, makes good price for the customer, and makes, of course, good business for us. I talked about the, the lead inbox. This is something where the car, as I said, goes, uh, uh, sends an info uh, to the dealer. We have already 10,000 leads a day. We started with 1,000 leads a day. It's 10,000 leads a day. That's more than 2 million leads. It's live in 17 countries, all the brands, cross the brands, with 25,000 users in the dealerships. And that is what really creates impact in front of customer, and of course, what creates revenues for our partners and for us. And that is the important thing when we talk about this loyalty loop. So what have we done, and what are we going to do in the future? We have done already services live. As I said, we don't have to wait for autonomous driving cars. We have plug and charge. The car itself registers at, at the charging station. You don't need the card of your charging provider anymore. We have the digital maintenance, predictive maintenance. We have the in-car charging app. The in-car charging app helps the, 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 the driver to plan a multi-stop uh, route planning so he knows where's the route, with what battery status he wants to end up in the final destination. What is about this? If you want to go to, to a hotel and you, need, you know there are one week at that hotel, you don't need 80% of battery when you end up there. So if the car knows that, it does not give you probably 50 kilometers before your destination another charging point where you wait an hour to, or, or 30 minutes to upload it to 80%, you can go and with a residual state of 15%, for example. You can give feedback for the charging stations and you can really then help to create a better charging net. 
And then, of course, in the future, we will have uh, um, metaverse, NFTs. We will have themes in the car with your favorite soccer club, your favorite football club. It's individual. You can also actually resell it. We will have in-car office. We talked about it because a lot of our customers work in the car. For example, the field force, 100,000 of field, work, uh, field force workers, each and every day, they have their appointments. Each and every day, they're looking for a hotel. So in the future, they will be able to book a hotel, for example, out of the car, that they have an overnight stay, things like that. Really helping to do the work in the car. Because what are they doing, actually? Every five minutes, they look on the mobile. What is the next appointment? What is the next call? So we want to help them put that on the screen. And then we will have also uh, usage-based insurance. That's what I said. Anonymous data, give it to insurance company and help them to create individualized uh, um, insurance tariffs. And we will have in search engine. That means forward customers planned or spontaneously to a restaurant, to a hotel, really help them to make life easier and make life better. And that is what we call the ecosystem of our brands. So thank you for your attendance. So I hope you have at least got a glance what's, what is the ecosystem about, what is about the lock-in, what is about the ID, service internal, external services, help our customers with data-driven development have an easier life. Thank you very much.